Hi everyone, John from MotionWorks.net here. I'm just working on this Hulkbuster helmet, been modeling this in my spare time. And I've just started on this vent section down here. You can see if we look at the image here in front view, there's the vent. A little bit difficult to see. This is actually a toy version of the Hulkbuster helmet. Online I found a version of it that had been opened up and you can see it a little more clearly here. It's important to have as much reference imagery as you can find, it saves you having to guess. So I thought I could just spend a few moments creating that and record this to share with you. I already have some of the work done. When I created the actual helmet shape, I saved a version of it and I split this section off and that's kind of the basis of this section here that I already have. But there's a little bit more work that needs to be done to finish this off, so let's do it. I've named this collar inner. I'm just going to solo it using HB solo. It's going to hide everything else. And I need to create the vents. There's about 12 vents that need to be created. I need to add some extrusions as well. If we have a look at this example image. There's this little step here. There's this little extrusion here as well. And the whole thing has depth as well. So I'll have to add that at the end. Now, obviously, if I go ahead and I do more cuts in here, I'm going to affect the curvature of this, so I need to think about that as well. So it has a step, so if I put the step at the top, I think that's about the right position. Using HB Solo all the time. Okay, so Extrude Tool, and I'll change the edge angle to minus 90. Okay, that should do it. That corner's looking okay. Now I need to bring that up. While it's still live, I can just adjust that angle. That looks pretty good. That's a little bit too high over there. Just come on the inside, grab this point here. And I can use a slide tool for that, much easier. Yeah, something like that. Okay, I can hear cockatoos going past my window here in Sydney on Monday morning. Okay, so if I press the Q key, that's already in a subdivision surface, so I can see that's smooth. I need to give that a nice sharp edge. So I'll add a few control cuts in first. Okay. Now I just double click to select all of those. A faster way would have been to grab the Fong Break Selection tool. And you can see it's given me a blue line for all of the breaks. I just click select all. Didn't grab the outside edges though. So if I press UL and I select the boundary loop, now I've got everything I need. But I don't need that one. So which tool you use to select really depends on what's going to be the fastest. Probably was just faster to double click. Okay, so bevel tool solid mode. I want this to be fairly sharp, not too sharp. Something like that. Okay, it's looking good. I do need one on the inside here. I can just do that with the knife. Actually, I probably could have selected that, huh? Let's bring that in and see how this works with the bevel tool. Yeah, I should have left that selected after all. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. Okay, so I've got those edges now selected. Now I need to create the cuts for the vents. So one way to do that would be to bevel that in solid mode. Something like that. Now I need to select the original cut once those new edges are added in. And I, I could go select and set selection, but this is not going to work. I tried this before. So I'll bevel this out like this, something like this. Okay, and now if I go back to 
restore that selection, it looks all messed up. So that's okay. If I go UB and select these edges, this is ring select. You always want to try the fastest possible way to select things. Sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. Okay, so now I want to add new edges in so I can use edge cut to add two edges and then I can scale that and that adds those extra edges in. So that's a pretty reasonable way to do that. Okay, so now I need to start deleting some stuff. So poly mode and come in and select all of these guys. Hide this guy again just by control clicking. It's really useful when you haven't got a lot of desk real estate. I'm working at 1920 by 1080 here, so. All right, so I can delete those now. I'm using HB delete. Um, just a quick way to delete things and delete the points as well. So it saves you having to optimize. I'm just going to undo that. I need to add one more cut here because if I don't, when I bring this cut down here, I'm going to have a pole right on that corner and I don't want that. So I'm just going to undo back to there. Loop cut to there. Just need to remove this loop first. Okay. Knife tool. This is a sharpening technique that's mentioned in detail or covered in detail in making it look grade 11. Okay, something like that. And obviously how close you put these cuts to the corner will dictate how sharp that'll be. I'm gonna grab the polygon pen tool, control key, just to dissolve these edges. Okay, so that's sharpened that up nicely now. Okay, so now I have to deal with this. So probably the best way to do that is to go into point mode, grab these guys and collapse these in like that. Now I could go and do that for the other points as well, but I find it's better just to, once that's done, just double click and dissolve. So now we have that one edge again. So we'll keep our curvature down here and just take a quick look at this topology. Now, how am I gonna create quads out of that? Pretty straightforward. Just dissolve those. Slide tool, point mode, and just bring that out a little bit. So, Nice and sharp in here, and we have an effect of curvature down here. Let's try that again. Obviously, there's a bit of repetition for sharpening this. Now, whether you put this one in here or not really depends on how tight you want it. You could just leave this one in here. Let's just try that and see how it looks. So this one here, this one in there like that, and double click these, and this and this and dissolve. Sometimes I use a knife tool, sometimes I use the poly pen tool. So you've still got a quad here and here and you've got a little less geometry there. See, it's not quite as sharp, but at a distance, it doesn't really matter. It would probably be better off just by doing it that way. It just depends on how close you want to get and how tight you want that corner to be, of those corners. And of course, we've still got quads here, but we have these edges still running down, so that's pretty straightforward. I collapsed them before, but I can also 
use the poly pen tool and just snap this in like that. Not such a good thing to dissolve more than one edge at a time because you're left with points. So I find it's better to just select them with the move tool and just dissolve. Okay, just got to pull this one out to fix that polygon up there. There we go, so a little less detail. Okay, so I'll just go ahead and do the other ones now. I'll be back in a moment. Now, as I was working through these, I was just thinking it isn't ideal to have this polygon this close to the edge because if you just turn that on, you can see it is giving you a rather uneven tension there. So what we could have done, it doesn't really matter because you know it's still quads and you're not going to notice it. But if you wanted to, you could offset that by one loop of polygons. Let's just have a look. So just go through this procedure again. like that. And what you'd want to do is, before we started, was create an extra loop here, like that. And then come through and select these. And go through and remove the unneeded edges. Dissolve those. And you can see we've moved it away from that edge by one row of polygons. And now we get it nice and even. And let's move that polygon onto that flat surface. I'm just going to undo that and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I've gone ahead and done all of those now. It took a couple of minutes. Okay, so no pinching in there. So the only other thing left to do now is to add some extrusion to this. Polygon mode, select everything. I've already got all of the control cuts in place. Probably don't need this one. It's annoying me that I haven't actually created these terribly evenly. I probably would normally have them like that. Extrude tool. Now what I need to watch out for here is this corner because there's some fairly tight topology going on there. So let's just see how far we can get. Yes, yeah, so we're getting a bit of a mess there. Probably better to bring this forward. There we go, like that. A little bit tight in the corner. I don't need a back face because we're never going to see it and it's just going to add extra polygons in there and it's not going to be something that I would ever need to UV unwrap either. Because as I said, we're not going to see it. Just needs a little bit of depth in there. That's just enough to be able to see a little bit of light catch those edges. So you definitely want to be working flat, or in this case, there's a bit of curvature in there, but working without any extrusion for as long as possible and only add the extrusion at the end. And because I'd already put all of the control cuts in place first, there's nothing left to do. I could come in and grab the knife tool and just do a loop cut to sharpen that up a little bit, but it's really not that necessary. Because for one thing, we're not going to see the top. It does add a little bit of a tighter look down here. 
but I think it's probably better without it. Probably only going to see the helmet about this close. Obviously that's in symmetry, so I only have to do one side. And there will be a bunch of mechanics in here in front of that as well. I don't need to bother about this red section because I'm not going to open the helmet up so no one's going to see that. Nice to be able to start putting some of these details in now. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. For now, this is John from MotionWorks. Have fun, be creative, and keep modeling.